Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to show you how to tackle a limit problem that looks like this. It's a situation where you're given a rational expression and the rational expression in the numerator you have an unknown and you're asked to find the unknown if the limit exists and after finding what that unknown is, which is the k, you're supposed to then find the limit. While the second part is straightforward because once you have the expression after knowing what k is, you're able to just go ahead and take the limit based on what you know. But the problem is, how do we find k? And how do we even know that the limit exists? Let's get into the video. So the first thing you must understand is, if a rational expression has a limit as x approaches a certain constant, well, for you to even consider what the limit is, you have to first know that the rational expression exists, that is, it is defined. Okay, so usually um, the first step in taking limit is to try direct substitution. But you will observe that generally in a problem like this, when you do direct substitution, you're going to have negative 2 squared, which is going to be 4, then you have minus 2, minus 2, that's going to give you 0. So you'll be dividing this expression by 0. The only way you can solve this kind of a problem is if you can factor the denominator and then find something on top also that looks like what you factored in the denominator and you cancel them out. But right now, that's a problem because we can factor the denominator, but we cannot factor the numerator because we don't even know what k is. And there's k here, there is k here, and when you factor based on k, you still don't know what it's going to be. So, how do we go about this? The first thing you want to look for is, I'm going to assume that this rational expression is defined, that is, I will not be dividing by zero by the time I'm done, so I can find something to divide this by this. So what, what you do first is to factor the denominator, factor the denominator first, and rewrite this limit. So let's rewrite the limit. The limit is going to be, as x goes to negative 2, of 3x squared plus kx plus k plus 3 over, if you factor this out, you're going to end up with x um, plus 2 and then x minus 1. Okay, so that is a factored form of the denominator. So which of these two factors should you focus on? Well, the question is, which of these two factors will give you a 0 when you substitute negative 2? Well, it's going to be this. So the only way this limit will exist is if you can cancel out x plus 2 from something you get on top here. Okay? Which means that x plus 2 must be a factor of the numerator so that when you divide the numerator by x plus 2, you're going to get an expression and then you can take the limit. So what we're going to do is do a long division or synthetic division. I recommend synthetic division so that when you divide this numerator by x plus 2, the remainder is going to be 0. And that way you can find what k is. Can we do that? Yes. That's the beauty of synthetic division or long division. Okay. Now, let me go back to it. Why am I choosing x plus 2 and not x minus 1? I'm choosing x plus 2 because it's only this um, factor here, x plus 2, that will give me a 0 when I substitute do a direct substitution of negative 2. So that's the problem, and that's what I need to get rid of. Okay, so now let's do synthetic division by dividing the numerator by this factor, x plus 2. So you remember, if you want to do synthetic division, you just need to write down the coefficients of the terms. So here we have 3, here we have k, and here we have the constant is k plus 3. So I'm going to write, and when I, I have solved this, I'm going to get x equals negative 2, which is this expression. So I'm going to do this, negative 2. And then I have um, 3, k, and then k plus 3. So let's do it. So I'm going to draw this line here, and this is going to be 3, 0. That's how you start the synthetic division. Just drop this down, and then you start your work. Now 3 times negative 2 is going to be negative 6. Add both, you get k minus 6. Now multiply k minus 6 by negative 2, you're going to get negative 2k plus 12. Negative 2k plus 12. That's what we get here. Now we're going to add these two together. K plus negative 2k gives you negative k, and then 3 plus 12 gives you plus 15. Okay, now we're done with our calculation. And remember that if what you divided this expression with is a factor, this must be equal to 0. And that was the assumption we started with, that this is a factor because that's the only way this, this limit will exist, and this expression will be defined. Okay, so we're going to say this is equal to 0, and this is what we have left. Now, we just need to deal with this so we can find k. Okay, so... Since x plus 2 is a factor, okay, negative k plus 15 equals 0, which is the remainder, okay? So the remainder is 
is negative k plus 15, and that's equal to 0. We just need to find what k is. So now that we know that negative k plus 15 equals 0, we can say that k equals 15. Okay, so we can say k equals 15, and then we can go back here and replace k and write the correct expression. Just imagine, this is going to be 15x plus 15 plus 3, that's going to be 18, okay? So we can actually write the top, let's just quickly simplify the top and factor it. So we can say that um, 3x squared, okay, plus 15x plus 18, the top part, can be rewritten as... Um, well, there's three common to every, so we can take out the three, factor out the three, and then we're left with x squared plus 5x plus 6. Oh, this is easy to factor, because this is x plus 2, x plus 3. Okay, so we can now go back to the question and take the limit. Okay, let me just put this away, and then we can say the limit as um, x goes to negative 2. So now, just because we've got an answer, simply tells us that the limit exists. Okay, if we couldn't solve this expression, this was not possible to solve, maybe there was no k. In the final part, there was no k, we couldn't get any value for k, then we would say the limit doesn't exist. But because we got a value for k, the limit does exist. Okay, so now let's go back to this. And then we can write this expression on top as 3, okay, into x squared plus 5x plus 6 over, what's the bottom? We have x plus 2, and then we have x minus 1. Okay, this simply means it's the limit of x um, goes to negative 2 of 3. If we factor the top, we're going to get x plus 2, x plus 3, over x plus 2, x minus 1. So, now we've gotten to the beautiful part, and now we can just cancel this out, cancel this out, and we're going to have the limit as x goes to negative 2, negative 2 of 3 into x plus 3, over x minus 1. Now we can go back to direct substitution again and see what we get. If we do direct substitution, what we're going to be getting will be 3 into negative 2 plus 3 over negative 2 minus 1. This gives us 3 times 1. It's going to be 1 over negative 3. Oh, that's going to be 3 over negative 3. So the limit exists, and we found the limit to be negative 1. I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe if you're not. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.